Today on The Breakfast, despite assurance and campaign to end fuel subsidy, organized labor insists federal government should provide buffers an alternative to removal of work. Is that a way forward? Also on The Breakfast, amid security concerns and other bottlenecks, INEX says preparation for the 2023 general elections are largely being concluded this is the true picture. And like always, we'll also be reviewing all of the bigger stories making the headlines across major dailies. It's a beautiful Wednesday morning. Welcome to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. I am Messi Popo. And uh, the lineup is quite interesting this morning. I ask that you sit back and be part of the conversation as we proceed. As always, we start off with a top trending conversation. But it's also important to note that the queues have not disappeared. The queues are still very much around, especially, you know, in Lagos. And I can only imagine what the people and what you have to go through, you know, just to get to work and also get to your different place of business. It's just very, you know, difficult. However, our top trending this morning, we start with the issue of defection. Now, one would think that just a few days before the 2023 elections that we have anticipated, that the issue of defection would be a different story, but that's not the case. As we have uh, Baba Ayor Liman, uh, the Northeast Zonal Secretary of NNPP, announcing his resignation as a Zonal Secretary of the Northeast, as well as member and coordinator of the Presidential Campaign Council of the NPP, P, that's uh, presidential candidate Dr. Rabi Ukwankwaso. Now, uh, Lehman claimed that the reason he detached or, you know, ditched the N NPP for the PDP alongside many of his supporters was due to lack of structure needed to win the elections in Nigeria. He also explained that his decision to defect stemmed from the internal crisis and, you know, the total disregard for the rule of law and lack of unity among members due to poor leadership of the party. Now, according to him, he said the NNPP's leadership poorly managed his affairs, resulting in the emergence of various factions, and he therefore can vast, you know, votes for the PDP and his candidate at all levels in the forthcoming election. It might also interest you to know that um, the chairman of the party had purportedly suspended Lehman on the 13th of July, that's of uh, last year, 2022, without the consent and approval of the party's zonal chairman and the National Working Committee, that's the NC, uh, NWC. And some have described that act as, you know, a total disregard and violation of the NPP's constitution. And that's because every party has their constitution and what have you. Uh, don't forget that Rabi Yukwankwaso is in the race, uh, contesting that race come the 25th of uh, February 2023 to become the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So we're still talking about defection. Well, however, the reason for political defections have not changed. It can be attributed and has always been attributed to political interests, the pursuit of political ambition, internal party, uh, you know, this division, lack of transparency in the party process, lack of political ideology and political agenda, and this is it. And it's not surprising because since democracy started in Nigeria, uh, we have actually faced series of problems from conflicts between parties to literacy, corruption, you know, political defections as the challenges affecting the country. Uh, a functional political system is what everybody prays for. But it might also interest you to know that the first known and recognized political defection in Nigeria happened in 1951, when the members of the National Council for Nigeria and Cameroon, uh, that's the NCNC, defected and joined the action group, the AG, in order to deny Nnamdi Azikiwe then the power of the majority, making Obafemi's Awolowo, becoming the prime minister of, you know, the Western region and other major defections have also taken place during the course of our democracy. And so including, uh, you know, 
the current president, including uh, the likes of Peter Obi, defected from the PDP, the likes of, you know, Atiku Abubakar once upon a time was, you know, in the APC. I mean, there's been a lot of defection back and forth from whether senators and whatever you bought. It's, it's totally and really, really saddening that uh, this is the kind of politics that we have been practicing. And the question would be, is there any legal restraint or restriction, I mean, or restraint uh, from, for, political defections or defections, if you like to say, do we have any law, you know, stopping anyone from defecting? How can we, you know, move away from such kind of practice and politics? Because at the end of the day, in whose interest are you, you know, moving from one party to another? I mean, just how many more days before the election? One would think that you have seen all, but that's not the end of it here. I'm sure that even just the day before the election, you still have a lot of persons who would defect. But that's the kind of politics that we have uh, found ourselves, and that's the kind of politics that's playing. Next is that uh, there's a video that made the rounds. It got a lot of Nigerians talking, especially at an era where we're asking for uh, a lot of Nigerians are saying, hey, we want those who have the capacity, the ability, you know, to... Um, Run the affairs of the nation. And so, former president Olusha Gunobasanjo was seen, you know, playing the role of a prefect, a senior prefect, during a reunion with uh, secondary school mates. And uh, can we run the tape now? Do we have a video? It would make sense if you see, you know, what I'm talking about. But I mean, there's a former military, you know, personnel, and so it's within him. But it's quite interesting. I love the fact that he lives his life. Okay, well, I think we've been told that we have the video, so we'll quickly just run that uh, track and then we'll come back and talk some more. Hello, hello, please be on the, on the line. Please. On the line. <laughs> Hello, hello, please, you on the, on the line, please. On the line. And that's the former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Hulusha Gunabas, on draw right there. Uh, in the video that got a lot of Nigerians talking about how fit he is. I mean, to some it was quite comical, but um, some has described that particular act as a role, you know, acting like a senior school prefect. You remember if you were in school and then you were a prefect, you know how it is. I mean, there's this power, you, you are in charge of everyone. But I think that, you know, looking at that video, you want to see someone who's disciplined. Uh, he, that hasn't left him. I'm sure the military... Uh, training in him still remains and it's always good to see him you know having a great time with his life uh, that's a great one but uh, let's quickly move away from that another one it's really saddening it's a complaint but I think that almost uh, the entire country might be complaining every agency of government the NDLEA officials have lamented poor welfare and salaries and so the officers of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency are saying that um, they cannot survive with the 44,000 euro salary and they cannot take care of their families and take care of their life. But to be very honest, I mean, think about it. What can 44,000 euro do today? They also express their frustration over poor, uh, you know, remuneration and lack of promotion, non-payment of medical and order allowances and lack of befitting barracks for them to stay. So they say that uh, the workers... They are calling on the president, Mohamed Buhari, and Nigerian leaders to focus on the agency and save it from collapse. Now, some of the officer, officers, when you know they had to speak with uh, men of the press, agreed to the fact that they take bribe. They say, hey, we take bribe just to meet our financial needs. And officers of these agencies are not happy. And uh, they are complaining about it. Salary structure is not good, no single allowance. Some officers barely feed their family, no house rent you know, no single allowance, no hazard allowance, no transfer allowance. I mean, too many issues. But 
Is that even not the case with almost every agency? I mean, just of recent time, we hear reports of saying that, you know, the police might just be embarking a protest right here in Lagos, even though uh, we have a police personnel saying that's not, that's not true and they can't do that. But just a you know, conversation I had with my colleague just before coming in there. It feels like every other agency. You hear the military as well, uh, you know, the Nigerian army to be very precise. You hear different government agencies complaining of poor salary, poor you know, structures, no allowance and what have you, uh, poor condition of living, no provision and, and all of that. And so we, we ask ourselves, how do we fight corruption when we're not taking care of the brother of corruption, which is poverty? because they're like cousins. So poverty and corruption uh, work hand in hand. And so if we are ever sincere with the fight against corruption, then we should be sincere in ensuring that we improve you know, the standard of living of the people. Now, this is not to say it's an excuse. It's you know, an excuse for corrupt practice or corrupt behavior or behaving in a certain way. But I'm just saying that if we want to be very honest with this, then we need to pay attention. Uh, you know, to this particular factor, that we need to ensure that, uh, you know, the working environment is conducive, not just salary increase and what have you. Uh, you need to look at the allowance and what have you, the condition of living of the people. So the list is almost endless and we can continue to act like everything is normal. I think that the entire system requires an overhaul. We need to look at it, reject the system from the police to the military to every, you know, agency of government. Because uh, when we're talking about double digit inflation, what is 44,000 era going to, you know, do? What can, how can you you know, survive with that when you have rents to pay. And if you live in a city as Lagos, then it becomes, you know, almost impossible for you to live among the living, <laughs> right? And you want to talk about the cost of transportation when people are buying petrol for 250 naira per liter, almost 300 naira in, in some areas. I mean, depending on where you're buying from. So when you juxtapose all of that, how do they survive? And some of these persons, I, you need to put yourself in their shoes. And that's what we talk about empathy. So imagine that you, uh, a man has a family, uh, he's himself, he has a wife, and then he probably has to pay rent and then he has kids. In an era where a lot of people believe that uh, it's okay to have children as much as you want. You can have five and six and saying, hey, God will take care of them. And so imagine that a man has himself to take care of his wife and then he has like six children and you're going to be looking at 44,000 era as salary to cater for the end. How do you even explain that? You have school fees, you have issue of feeding, clothing, what have you. Uh, no, that's too much. But we can, do, we can do better and I don't think it's impossible. It's very possible. It's not rocket science. It's possible to achieve, you know, the system because we are naturally endowed, we have all that it takes, we have the resources as a country, but then we need to find a way to fix it, manage it properly. We have no business being poor as a nation, that's what I think, and people have no business suffering. And so, yes, I'll say this again, if we're very honest in, if we're honest with the fight against corruption, if you say we want to fight corruption as a country, then we need to pay attention to the issue of poverty. That's the size of our conversation on the top trending. We take a break when we return. It'll be time for us to go through our papers this morning. We call it Off the Press. Please stay with us.